Hi, welcome to this video on Assembly Bill of Materials in Dynamics Nav. Assembly in Dynamics Nav pertains to combining sellable items. One of the questions that's often asked is what is the main difference between assembly management and manufacturing? There are many differences, but one of the main ones is that in manufacturing, you will define what you will make and how you will make it, while in assembly management, it's only about defining what we will make. Combining sellable items as a kit in most of the cases have a simple production or assembly process, which means that there's no need to define the assembly process in the system. So that's why the focus is really on what you will make. This is something that we will do by setting up an assembly bill of material. We will use an assembly policy which can be assembled to stock and assembled to order. We will have a look at how we can assemble items that we typically want to put on stock. In Trade and Dynamics Nav, you will see how we can manage assemble to order processes. That's, the assembly itself is done based on assembly orders. We will also cover how we can use and manage these assembly orders. Now, if we focus on the assembly item and the assembly bill of material, which are two of the most important components in assembly management, you will see that an assembly item contains an assembly bill of material and that the bill of material describes the components. So we can have a regular item as a component. But you can also have an assembly item itself, which we can then call a sub-assembly. And we can have resources. We can set up a production or an assembly process in assembly management. And so, when, and so when manufacturing, we can do this by creating routings, by assigning a resource. We could say to put together a number of components into an assembly item, a specific resource needs an hour. That's something that you can do by assigning it as a bill of material component. A multi-level bill of material is an assembly bill of material with sub-assemblies, which you can then use to explode the bill of material function, as you will see in the latter part of this video. Let's now go into the application. I'll start by showing you how to set up assembly management, then create assembly items and assembly bill of materials. So I'll first search for assembly setup. Let's start with the stock out warning, which shows if an assembly item is out of stock and which components are out of stock. Then we can specify copy common dimension from. Should dimensions come from the item or resource card or the order header? You can set up a default location for orders and copy comments. And then I'll select the warehouse tab. From here, you can specify if you want to create movements automatically when assembly items are finished. So basically, that's a setup that you would need to do in order to get started with assembly management. Now let's have a look at the assembly items. So I'll just select my items tab. Here in this assembly bill of material field, you can show which items are assembly bill of materials. And if I scroll down, you'll see that Cronus has a number of assembly items created. So it'll be the ones that say yes for assembly bill of materials. As an example, I'll search for the Contoso conference system. And then I'll select the yes in the assembly bill of material. So this conference system has a number of components. What we're doing when creating the bill of material is assigning the different components. In this case, you, you can see that all the components are items. What we can also have is that a component is also an assembly bill of material like we saw on the slides. And this is what we call subassemblies. So then you can have multi-level assembly bill of materials. I'll just expand in the home navigation and then select edit list.
In this drop down, you'll see that you'll have a choice between a blank item, an item, or a resource. Next, you can specify then the item or resource number, the description, assembly bill of material, and so on. And that's how we can set up an assembly bill of material and how we can specify this. So now we're going to go look into another example. I'll select the Contoso office system. You can see that the Contoso office system uses sub-assemblies, and you can see that 1952W is also an assembly bill of material. Now we can explode the bill of material. Exploding the bill of material of this sub-assembly will make all the components of that sub-assembly be inserted as components of my parent item. So I'll just select explode the bill of material. So now you'll notice that we don't see the sub-assembly anymore, but we see the side panel, the base, the top panel, the rear panel, and the shelf. So in that way, you can explode sub-assemblies in order to have its components in the bill of material of the parent items. So I'll just close this and then select the item itself. By looking at the assembly bill of material field, I can see that this is an assembly item. You can also specify that you want to use the replenishment system assembly. I can do that by going into the replenishment tab. From here, you can choose between assembly, purchase, or production order. Then if you scroll down, you'll have to select the assembly policy. You can choose between assemble to stock or assemble to order. And these are basically the steps that you have to take in order to set up the assembly management and assembly items in Dynamics Nav. Now let's create an assembly bill of material. So here I am on my list of items and I'll just select new. I'll just put in my item number. And then for description, I'll put in a Toronto conference room package. For base unit of measure, I'll put in pieces. For costing method, I'd select standard. And then I'll put in my general production posting group as retail. For tax production posting group, it'll be 25. And for inventory posting group, it'll be a resale. Then I'll just scroll down to my replenishment fast tab. And for the replenishment system, I'll select assembly. And I'll head over to item tracking and put in the code. I'll go back up to my general fast tab and select the assembly bill of material field. Then I can put in my items by selecting new. We'll be putting in four items. Put an item as a type. And I'll put in two pieces of this. Add another item. Put in one piece. And I'll add another item. And I'll put in the last item. Put in one piece. 
And now you have your assembly bill of material. So if I close this down, I'll notice that my assembly bill of material changed from no to yes. And this concludes this video on the assembly bill of materials in Dynamics Nav. Thanks for watching.